Boker Tov, everybody. I've been trying this every week and I still can hear it through the walls. Boker Tov, everybody. Yeah, that works. I can take this off. Okay. I know it's a little scary. You're not used to it. Uh, well, good morning, Boker Tov, everybody. It's really exciting to be back here at Tefila. And today we are going to be looking a little bit at the Torah portion that's coming up. The Torah portion this weekend is Vayachel Pikudei. It's also the last of the Exodus chapters. It's the end of the book of Exodus. And we figure we're kind of wrapping up the whole like, you know, Sinai thing and like, you know, getting over leaving Egypt. But no, this one is a very unique Parsha because it's about architecture. Architecture? Yes, architecture, more than architecture, but we are introduced to the concept of the first architect within the Torah. What am I talking about? Well, in this particular Parsha, in this particular chapter, God gives the instructions of, oh, can I welcome our visiting students? Oh, see, speaking of instructions, I receive instructions while I'm sitting here. And as we know, we take instructions that we are given from above and then we just bring them out to everyone in new creative ways. So all visiting parents and students and grandparents and everyone, welcome. How's that, Pamela, good? As long as Pamela's happy, we're all happy. Yes, so like I was saying, the first architect in this Parsha is necessary because God has given the instructions for the Mishkan. This is the little enclosure, the building that holds the Ten Commandments, that holds what God had provided to Moses and the Jewish people when they're living in the desert you gotta have a good building. Well, God gives very specific directions in which to do this. And in fact, if you read the Torah in a certain way, you'd say God gives a lot of specific instructions. So if we're human beings and we get all these specific instructions, where's the space for our creativity, right? Because if you really take a step back and you think about it, if we're all created in God's image and God creates, then our creativity is how we express God's image in us. So what's with all the instructions? How can we possibly do that? And what we learn from B'Tzalel is that it's actually possible to be super creative within the confines of certain guidelines and certain rules and certain ideas. So just like a building, an architect might build the structure that you need and you can do creative things with this. This is hitting a little close to home for me currently because uh, I'm literally close to home. Uh, but also what I think about it as a big uh, music fan and you're gonna hear some similar responses today, is it's sort of like jazz music. You get these notes that give you a bit of a framework on how to go, but then you can improvise around those notes and create a lot of beauty. So the way to think about it is this. We are made in God's image as creators. God gives us certain guidelines and rules, just like he gave B'Tzalel to build this beautiful Mishkan. And then everyone, by the way, contributes to that. So everyone gave some of their personal things to the building of the Mishkan. In fact, this might be the first time that a Jewish community asked for donations and got way too much. In fact, God had so, I mean, sorry, Moses and B'Tzalel had so many materials to work with that they were able to create the most beautiful Mishkan. There's a saying that creativity is the highest form of comprehension. This is something we believe very strongly at this school and is why our arts program is such an important part of who we are as a Jewish school. Because creativity is how we express our comprehension, our understanding. It's as if God is in the shadows and we ourselves are filling in the details. Today, you're gonna hear from some of our teachers in our various different arts, and you're gonna learn a little bit about how that expression of creativity works its way into our school, into our lives, and into the beauty that we have here at Brandeis Marin. So here we go, to feel the time. Please join me in singing Mode Ani.
from Psalm 150, hallelujah. about Jewish artist Saul Lewitt. He lived from 1928 to 2007 and he was a conceptual artist. You may be thinking, what in the world does that mean? Well, in conceptual art, the idea or concept is the most important part of the work, which means the finished product is not as important as all of the instructions to create that piece of art. He thought that anyone could do art, but the quality of the piece depended on the idea from which it was generated, not the finished artwork at all. His art was the actual idea for the art, and he wrote detailed instructions, writing down every little thing that artists needed in order to make their own versions of that piece of art. He reduced it to a few of the most basic shapes, quadrilaterals, spheres, triangles, colors, basic colors like red, yellow, blue, black, different types of lines and organized them by guidelines open to the artist's creativity. He developed instructions for wall drawings that are still being created today. You can imagine that each version is very different from the others. The directions are all the same, but every artist take the, takes those directions and interprets them, and the finished piece varies from artist to artist. All right, good morning. So I'm Rachel Hubbard, and I am the K-8 through art teacher. We are going to use our own artistic expression to draw, but within the boundaries and rules that I will provide to you. I'm gonna give you specific instructions, but please be, be free and creative with what you do with those instructions. This will be a quick exercise, just a few minutes long. Teachers, go ahead and hand out a white piece of paper and a Sharpie to all students. And students might want to have something underneath on top of their desk so that the Sharpie doesn't bleed through onto the desk. And if you're at home, just grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil anything like that. So take a moment and get set up and don't draw on anything yet. I will give you specific instructions. All right, looking good. Okay, so take the cap off of your Sharpie and you are going to draw six dots on your paper with your Sharpie separated from one another, six dots. And that's it for now. Go ahead and connect those dots 
with straight lines. Straight lines connect those six dots any way you like, in any direction you want, connect those six dots with straight lines. When you're done with that, go ahead and add three more dots. Three more dots anywhere on your paper. With those three dots, you are going to connect those three dots that you just added with wavy lines, wavy lines. Remember, I'm giving you specific instructions, but you are creative within those instructions. All right, add three more dots anywhere on your paper. Three more dots. And when you're done with that, you're going to connect those dots with loopy lines, loop de loop de loop, loopy lines. When you're finished, you're gonna put your cap back on your Sharpie. And let's take a look. Can everybody hold up their piece of paper? Look at your classmates, look at each other's artwork. I gave everybody really specific instructions and everyone's Art is so different from one another because we are all creative and we all bring our heart and creativity to our artwork, even within boundaries. Please join me in rising and seeing our call to worship the Barhu. <laughs> Please have a seat. Before we continue to Shema, can we ask all teachers to collect the art and take a picture, please, with all the art so, and send it to me and Lisa, please. Thank you. Our next pair is the Shema Ve'ahavta on page 46, Amud Arba'im Shish. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Oh, she took my 
ואהבת את אדוני אלוהיך בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מידיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מתארך היום על לבביך ושינתם לבביך ודיברת פעם ושבתך בביתך ובלבתך בדרך ובשלפך ובקמך ושתם מאות על ידיך והיו לבותפות בעיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך Please join me in singing Mi Hamofa. Good morning, everyone. I'm Andrew from the Design Lab, and I've been asked to talk today a little bit about how I see what we just saw with Rachel's uh, art project and how we all, through our creativity, create so much diversity in the projects that we do. I see that every day in the Design Lab with projects that come in, and I start out by showing off an example a lot of times, and I'm amazed at how many different things come out of the projects that we do and how different everybody makes something. And let's see, I don't know if Rachel is showing us anything. I mean, uh, Lisa, do you have some pictures for me? So in this case, what you're gonna see is a robot project that I did with sixth grade. And the one up in the upper corner in the yellow is the one that, we, that I built. And I started out just showing it as a basic frame, knowing full well that it was going to change into so many different ways. And you can see all the different designs and even gigantic ones or small ones are covered in duct tape or plain cardboard. And I made mine in plywood and we had battle bots come out of it and we had all sorts of things and people personalized them and customized them. So it shows that every day in every project that we do in Design Lab. And it's pretty amazing. It's also fun to watch as a teacher to see that. And this reflects what we've been talking about here today. Amida, please rise and flip to page 56. Nala mod vipabaka shalit not la mood hamishi mushikish. Adonai sapata jita kubia kita ila tefa. Oh Lord, open up my lips and my mouth may declare your glory. Thank you. 
Please join me in singing Ose Shalom. Ose Shalom Bimroma. everybody um so I, I was listening to rachel when she was talking about uh the, this wonderful uh art that we were going to do and i felt like she was talking about what it means to be a human being when she was describing what we were gonna do i was just blown away with all the things that you know it, it brought up so today here, we have a couple of interesting words in Hebrew that kind of like share another and bring another way of looking, uh, understanding to this whole idea of creativity and art and really what it means to be human. So the first one is Yetzira. Yetzira is creation and it's um, the roots of the, the root of the word is Tzadi and Resh. It also forms the word yetsu, which means a creature. Tsua, which means shape. Yetsil, which means um, inclination or desire. So all these things together, right? Like we as creatures who are using shapes and our desires, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad, to create something, right? All of this together goes into what art is or creation. Next, please. And then Omanut. Omanut is art. And in the root of it, which is Aleph Mem Nun, also is in the word Emuna, which means belief, like to believe in something, right? The same root is also in the word Emun, which is trust, and then Imun, which is practice. Now, let's see, what does Hebrew tell us about art? There's a belief, you gotta trust yourself, and you gotta practice. And that brings art. And our last word is Betzalel. Betzalel was the man that was chosen as the architect 
and maybe project manager of building the Mishkan um, when the Jews were in the desert, which is what we read about this tar- parasha. Now, the name of Betzalel has an ending, Aleph Lamed, which is the root of the word El, God. And um, I'm just going to mention a couple of names. You might know them. Eliana, Eli, lots of Elis in third grade. B, F, others, and in fourth grade. Israel, Ariel, Daniel, Gabriel, all these L, 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 all means that we have God in us. So, wow, we are a holy community, guys. If you haven't, if you didn't realize it, just look at all the names we have here with God's name. So Bezalel has God in his name, and then he has another word, which we're going to get to. Next. Okay. So L we said is God, right? Cell, which is the other two letters in Betzal L, Be just means in. Cell is a root, is, um, forms a couple of other words like shadow, Selem, which is an image. Matslema, which is a camera, Silum, which is a photograph, and then all this bring up the idea of Betzelem Elohim, which is a phrase taken from Bereshit, the story of creation, where uh, humans are described as being created, Betzelem Elohim, in God's image. So it's this beautiful idea that We're not looking like God since we don't know what God looks like, but we have the ability to do certain things like God. And in this context, to create. Since God created the world, humans have the ability, being B'Tselem Elohim, to create. Just like B'Tselel, who was the architect who created or helped create the Mishkan. Thank you. Please rise and join me in singing the Israeli national anthem, Hatikva. What a cool to feel of talking about creativity. Of course, I want to share about music as well. I think that creativity is a human experience. It's a way that we connect and find joy. It's something that we need in our lives. And I think that music is one of the great ways that we can express ourselves and our creativity and our joy. Like uh, Jonathan said in the beginning, it's at the pinnacle of the ways that we learn. First, we start repeating just what we've heard, and then we start to understand it, be able to analyze and figure stuff out. And then at the top of that pyramid of greatness is we can create our own stuff. And so we're doing that all the time. From the time we're born, babies start creating sounds. They start trying out stuff they've heard. They start making their own words and their own sentences out of what they've had, the structures that they've heard. And that turns into music too. 
we and every single grade as a music teacher, we're always creating. Starting in kindergarten, we're creating little songs all the time, all the way through up eighth up to eighth grade. In your other subjects, you're creating all the time. You're creating essays. You're creating new problems. You're solving new problems. Creativity is something that we need as human beings. We've seen it, especially in this pandemic, that people turned to the arts because they're craving that connection to people. They're craving that need to create something and do something. So we're, we're talking about this and it's going to connect to our next tefillah as well. Um, the next two tefillahs are going to be led by the Jedi team, the justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion team. And we're going to be connecting that to Passover and talking about the story of Passover, but also how can we connect ourselves to it? Because that's what we want to do as human beings. We want to express ourselves. We want to connect ourselves. We want to feel a part of something. So we'll be talking about that more over the next couple of weeks. How can we connect and how can we create as well? Why, why do we do things over and over? Why do we do music? Why would we do a song that already exists? Somebody else already did it because we wanna share our voice. So with our last slide, which you'll see in a little bit after an announcement, um, it's the same song that we heard at the beginning, which you might know, but by a different person, putting in their own voice literally and their own joy and their own connection to a song. So, oh, so fun. I hope that you enjoyed today's tefillah and <laughs> I'm going to turn it over for one last announcement before our last slide. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, everyone. We were so impressed with the whole school in the first week of the recycling race. We want to make a special shout out to the fourth grade for making recycling posters and showing us how much they know about recycling. Woo! We're so proud of how enthusiastic everyone was. And remember, every week is a new chance to win. The first grade to receive the recycling race trophy is, drum roll please, first grade. Gosh, fourth, fourth grade? Third grade, get ready. Someone is running to you. Are we seeing them on the screen? He's running really fast. Good job. And remember every week's a new chance for a new grade to win. So good luck everyone. Have a great day. Shabbat Shalom. Bye everybody. Thank you.